Hello beautifuls, this is Romy here, and welcome back to Seduce Me 2, the visual novel demo. Why did I say visual novel? You guys know it's a visual novel. The demo! <sighs> I, I was a bit sidetracked, probably because Brandon was like, visual novel? <laughs> but anyway, we're playing Seduce Me 2, we have finished Sam's route, now we are heading into James. Quinn and them are best at Demon Hubness. What the hell? I wish to set a stone destiny. Because the fate of the Abyssal Plains is in the hands of the wrong man. I must set things right. I come bearing my life force as the price. Take as much as you desire, as long as my request is fulfilled. Then, that is the price, as long as you set the stone destiny. My name. My name is... The hell is going on? <laughs> I'd almost forgotten it. I clung to it by the single thread, knowing that if I let go, I'd be lost in a dark void, never to return. Why? Why was I so worried about my name? Well, it was the only claim I had to reality, especially when I was behind bars. What the hell? For some reason, I was in a cell. I didn't know why. I don't. I didn't know how I got in here. All I knew was that I was in it and that I was chained to a wall by shackles on my ankles. I didn't want to accept the bars are real. I didn't want to be in a cell. I didn't want to smell the dank stench of blood and sweat and man em em emanate emanating I can't talk from all around me. But I had no choice in the matter. No matter how many times I examined my surroundings, they sur they remained the same. I was in a cell and dimly in a dimly lit stone dungeon. The walls were unfriendly, and the shackles around my ankles provided no comfort. The rags I was forced to wear barely fit, and I felt filthy. Why was I here? I didn't have the answer. All I knew was that I was being tra I was trapped. I could hear quiet sobbing and muffled screaming from further down the passageway I was in. They were reverberating from down the hall, and I knew that they must have come from the fellow prisoners or the condemned. I, however, only had one neighbor. In the cell beside me sat a figure wrapped in a dark purple cloak. The top of the figure's head was shrouded, shrouded, shrouded by both the shadows in their cell and the hood that covered their face. They never spoke. They never moved. Were they dead? I watched them closely for some time, but never saw their body inhale, exhale, or show any other sign of life. I didn't wish to think on it yet further, so I turned my head away. What was happening? I opened my mouth to shout, hoping that maybe someone would hear me and give me some sort of clues as to what was going on. As I tried to come to command my voice to speak, however, the sound of a large door opening echoed through the dungeon. I turned my head towards the direction of the sound and watched as the hall slowly began to brighten, like there was a torch moving towards my cell. I stared, wide-eyed at what was approaching. Moving toward my cell was a man I recognized, one that had been close to my heart, and now I had... Now and now had a look of cold disdain in his eyes. My chest pounded as his name reverberated in my head. James. He was still in his human form, but his voice vibrated with demonic echoes and waves, sending shivers down my spine. His tone was cold and unfeeling, as if I was not someone he loved, but someone he despised with every ounce of his being. You still live. I'm surprised. Suddenly from the cell beside me, the cowed figure jumped up and slammed into the bars, gripping them as they snarled at James. I stared, now able to see who had been hiding, who, who had been hidden by the cloak. You piece of filth! How can you dare show your face again? Diana? James seemed unfazed as he stepped towards Diana's cage and leaned in, almost nose to nose with her. And you live too. How resilient you both are. We're not so weak as to break under your chains, traitor. After all, unlike you, I carry pure Lilith blood in my veins. In that human, the one you love is more powerful than your pathetic mind can fathom. What was Diana talking about? Why was James acting like this? 
I opened my mouth to speak, but felt something hold my hold back my voice. It was as if I, a vice had been tightened over my vocal cords and denied them any chance to create a sound in my throat. Chain smirked and gripped Diana's chin, making her snarl louder. Anyone can be broken. It just takes time and patience. Both of which I have in abundance. Fucking mongrel! James tightened his grip on her chin, digging his finger into her jaw. Diana could only wince and glare at the one holding her. I felt fear run through my body as his lips curved even more into a devilish smirk. How could he be? How could he look so evil? Be patient, woman. You'll have your turn soon enough. As James turned his gaze to me, I felt my body suddenly heat up. His eyes were glowing in an almost silky, so sickly. Not silky, sickly golden yellow as he stared into my soul and ignited my core with heat and desire. I felt dizzy and weak, my mouth falling open to allow a silent sigh escape from my lips. What was happening? James released Diana and walked to the door of my cell, quickly manipulating the lock to open it. As the door opened, I felt myself crawl backwards towards the back of the cell, suddenly afraid of the demon who was approaching. At the same time, I felt uncanny and unnatural elation, elation for the man approaching me with a smirk that tore at my heart. Well, time to dine. Um, excuse me? Don't you fucking touch her! Before I knew it, Diana pressed her body against the bars that divided our cells and grabbed James' shoulder, digging her nails into it. <laughs> you little... In retaliation, James swung his arm towards Diana and formed a familiar pistol in his hands. Within moments, he aimed and fired. <gasps> I could only watch as Diana jumped back and held her chest, blood oozing from between her fingers onto the ground. She stared at James in both pain and surprise before crumbling to the floor and exhaling the last breath she could ever take. My mind was caught in a frenzy of emotions, while I felt shocked, terrified, and mortified at what had happened. My mind continued to dance in the desirable waves that ran through my body. Why couldn't I control myself? The pistol in James' hand disappeared as he let out a sneer of irritation. Damn it! James then looked at me, towering over me as I both cowered in fear and melted against the back wall of my cell. Looks like you'll have to give me twice the amount of energy from now on. Uh... As James began to step towards me, I felt hot tears run down my cheeks while I panted like a dog in heat. I wanted to scream, I wanted to tell him not to hurt me. My voice began to press against the vice holding it, wanting to explode out. James' shadow consumed me and I let out a scream. Then I woke up. I shot up in my bed, panting wildly as my heart pounded hard against my ribcage. I gripped my hand over my chest, feeling my pulse beating underneath the skin in a frantic rhythm in time with my hasten, hasten, hasten breath. I heard the faint echo of my scream bounce through the room as I let reality sink in. It was a dream and I was awake now. Everything was okay. Everything was... What? My heart froze and I felt my body tense up at the sound of James' voice beside me. My, heat, my heated cheeks reminded me of the tears I had shed in the dream and who had caused them. I shot my head to the side to see James, the man whom I loved, but also the man who terrified me. Look at me with a face painted with concern and worry. Love, are you okay? Oh, oh damn. We are angry. Get away from me. <laughs> I couldn't control myself as I quickly rolled out of the bed and pressed myself back against the far wall, staring at him in absolute terror. James only stared back at me, still shocked and now troubled. He didn't move, most likely not wanting to frighten me further. <laughs> Images of the dream I had began to replay in my head, replacing the James in bed with the James that towered over me in that dark jail cell. My body shook violently from the memory, but soon my logic began to break the images apart leaving me with the sight of James, still in bed, staring at me. My thoughts slowly melted and I felt myself start to cry once again. This time, my heart began to ache as I realized whom I had yelled at. I lurched forward and practically jumped at James, who opened his arms wide and wrapped me in them as I landed against his chest. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Shh. There's nothing to be sorry about. It was only a nightmare. I'm right here. 
James held me close to him as I began to cry into his shoulder. I continued to apologize to him, whimpering and sobbing like a child as the fear from the nightmare slowly began to fade away. James' hand simply ran over my head and hair, trying to calm me down. It had felt so real, and yet I knew that, I could, that it couldn't have been. James was right here, protecting me and comforting me, proving the love he had for me. He would never do it. He would never hurt me. Ever. Eventually, I was able to calm down and look up at the man holding me as he gently smiled down at me. Are you all right? I nodded, earning a small squeeze of his arms around me. I naturally cuddled closer to his body, desiring more of his warmth. What time is it? James gently hugged me tighter to his body as he looked over to his nightstand at his phone, which was docked in the fancy speaker charger. It's 3.40 a.m. Oh, holy crap. We still had a few hours before our alarms were set to wake us. Crap, why did I have to have a nightmare and wake both of us up? I gripped James' shoulders and looked up at him apologetically. I'm sorry, I know you need your sleep. Please don't worry about it. My beautiful fiancé is much more important to me than sleep. Um. <laughs> As he said fiancé, I couldn't help but feel my face heat up, letting a blush run along my cheeks. It was true, I was his fiance. He had asked me to marry him a couple of months ago and had accepted his proposal, wanting to be his wife. Just thinking about the idea of being with him forever made the imaginary butterflies in my stomach dance around happily and flutter their wings against my heart. It was a dream come true. His love and warmth assured me that my nightmare was just that. He was my wonderful husband to me, and I was going to be his wife. My body couldn't help but shiver in happiness. James caught the shiver and gently ran his hands up and down my arms. Are you feeling cold? No, you just make me happy, that's all. As I leaned up and kissed James' cheek, he smiled and kissed mine in return. His warm lips sent another euphor euphoric shiver down my spine and I felt joy run through my veins. I truly loved James. It wasn't long, however, before I felt something gently brush against my hip. I looked down as James cleared his throat in embarrassment. <laughs> Raising an eyebrow as well as growing a blush on my face, I looked up at my fiancé. As he looked away from me, his face almost red as a tomato. I I'm sorry, I can't exactly control my... well... my excitement when you <laughs> say things like that. It sounded like his voice cracked or something. Uh, kiss him passionately. Let's just... might as well, he woke up! And we did kind of wake him up. Our bad. James didn't have to use his powers to be too... Powers to light a fire in me. I gently lifted my head and kissed him, capturing his lips with mine lovingly. I felt my body slowly heat up, softly and tenderly to make sure not to scare me. His enthrallment over me became a natural part of our love me. It not only helped him gain energy, but it made the pleasure of our sex practically ten times more powerful. As I moaned against his lips, James gently ran his hands down my back and my rear, making me slightly jump in surprise at the feel. As he gripped it, I let out another hot moan, and James smiled and chuckled quietly against my lips. I stared at the ceiling, lusting for James as he pulled away from the kiss and began to kiss over my neck. I absolutely needed this man, and I needed him now. My body pressed against his and forced him back onto the bed, allowing me to be on top and be in control. James stared up at me, still gripping onto my butt, and gently massaging each cheek with his fingers. What the smirk. We both knew that he was, a he was always in control whenever we made love. However, my rebellious attempts at being top often spurred him on, on to be that much rougher in our play. It was like a game. Still, I like to think that I tried valiantly and not in pain. I moved my hands back and took his off off of me, lacing our fingers together and pinning them to the bed beside his beside his head. They didn't fight back against my hold, but James' face continued to in, 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 intim, intimidate me with a playful smirk and a dominant gaze. I gently leaned down and captured his lips again, grinding my hips against, against him and showing him the heat and desire I was feeling for him. His hand tightened around mine and I felt him gently grind back up into me and letting his own desire rub against mine. My body forced me to pull my lips away, making me bite my lower lip in pleasure at the grind before suddenly feeling myself being flipped over on the bed with chains smirking over me. 
I didn't care. I wanted him to take me in whatever position we ended up in. Wrapping my legs around his waist, I pulled James close and leaned my head up, brushing my lips against his. What are you waiting for? Take me. As you wish. Within mere moments, we went from granting each other to moaning each other's name as we made passionate love. Our clothes were thrown about the room, but we didn't give a damn. We were busy. Every movement pushed every movement pushed moans and cast from my lips, putting towards a beautiful high as we moved to moved against him and made him feel the same. Our sex wasn't just to feel pleasure. It was our bodies melding and moving together in perfect harmony with each, each moan, professing our love for each other. There wasn't a single moment of silence between us, letting our love echo through the room. As we were finally e eclipsed in ecstasy for each other, we held each other tightly, not wanting to let go of one another. James had pulled up our covers over our bodies and I had made, I had made his chest my pillow. James ran his hand through my hair, his heated and worn out breath matching mine, as we both fell back into the darkness of sleep. The nightmare didn't return. I slept peacefully with, within James' arms as if nothing else mattered in the world except for me and him. The morning was kind. James and I sweetly awakened, awakening before our alarms. Ollie, I felt well rested and ready for the day ahead. As I looked at James, who was still holding me, he opened his eyes slowly and smiled down at me. Good morning. Did you sleep better? Hell yeah. <laughs> I nodded, causing him to chuckle and kiss my forehead. My own lips curled up into a smile as his lips touched my skin. I hugged him tighter, burying my head in his chest. Do we have to get up? Unfortunately, we do. You have to organize more wedding arrangements, and I have to go to work. Do you have to? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I do. Now come on, let's go. No. <laughs> I couldn't help but whine. I wanted, I wanted to stay with James in bed just a bit longer. However, since he was the CEO of the Anderson's toy company, he had many obligations to attend to. I hate waking up in the morning, too. Especially today. I had to wake up early. Didn't enjoy it at all. I tend to whine <laughs> when I get up. I was like, ugh. Like, I, I just whine like a little baby. Like, ugh, why do I gotta wake up? It's like something you're supposed to do inside your head, but I just do it outside. And then Tyler, like, he's like, why, why are you whining every time you get up? Because I don't want to get out of bed. That's why. Not even his future wife could pull him away from those duties. As James sat up, he took me into his arms and kissed me lovingly, making a smile grow back onto my cheeks. I couldn't be annoyed for long whenever he kissed me. We went downstairs and had breakfast together before James went to work. It was always depressing whenever he left me alone in the house. However, he was a CEO and I was currently still in school getting a degree. Luckily for me, all my courses were online, so I didn't have to leave the house to get the degree I wanted. Attending classes in pajamas was always better than having to put on regular clothes. I stretched and yawned, still slightly tired from waking up in the middle of the night. As I thought about the moment, I couldn't stop images. I couldn't stop images of my nightmare flashing through my mind. Quickly, I shook my head. Nope, nope. It was a stupid dream. Nope. Before the night, I had had wonderful dreams of James and I preparing the wedding and eventually seeing each other at the church. He hadn't seen my dress despite trying to, so he'd been stunned. He'd, he'd be stunned and I would be blushing and smiling from ear to ear. That one nightmare, however, worried me. What if it was an omen, a sign? I wrapped my arms around myself feeling a cold wave of nerves rush, rush against my skin. My first instinct was to call Naomi and Suzu, just to vent about it and get it out of my system. But there was something supernatural at work. They wouldn't understand. Closing my eyes, I made a decision. I took my phone out of my pocket and dialed a number onto my phone without looking at it before bringing it up to my ear. The other line rang a couple times before I heard her voice answer at last. Hello? Oh, it's Sam! Crap, I didn't know Sam was still sleeping. Sam, is Carrie awake? Dude, why are you calling? <laughs> Sam, you dork! Give me the phone! I know it's her! Doofus, calm de- Mine, haha! <laughs> Hello? I smiled. Carrie's with Sam's wife. Yep, I said it, wife. 
They had been married for almost a year, and despite sounding like they were always bickering half the time, they truly loved each other. Sam had met her while investigating a haunted house. She had been there as an architectural consultant, and they clicked as soon as they both left. What was even more surprising about the relationship, however, was that Carrie knew what he was before he even confessed it to her. Apparently, she was a witch, a person who had been granted a permission to know about magic and other worldly creatures by the angels and was gifted with both demon and holy magic. I only got to know about other worldly creatures because I was in a relationship with one and was marrying him. Hey, Carrie, are you free right now? Huh? Well, I kind of just got out of bed, but let me check my schedule, okay? Give me a sec. I heard Carrie climb over Sam at one point, making him swear at her before he groaned in defeat at the situation. After a couple of book flips from the other line, Carrie finally cheered. I don't have anything scheduled for work today, so I'm all free. What do you need? Wedding advice? No, no, not that. Mind coming over? I kind of want to ask you something. Sure thing. Sam's got work today. It'll just be me. I'll even bring some pizza and stuff so we can have a fun girls lunch. What do you say? Sounds great. See you soon. The phone call ended and I let out a sigh. This will be good for me. Carrie might be able to help clear things up. I decided to clean as I waited. The mansion was huge after all and it never stopped collecting dust. Soon enough, however, Carrie came by with two pizza boxes in one hand and a large bottle of pop in the other. I couldn't help but feel my stomach gurgle at the delicious smell. She bought she brought cheap dish pizza. We settled into my room and made my bed into our picnic area. We laid out a blanket so we didn't get crumbs on the bed itself, but we liked our makeshift eating spot. And there also was a thing on Kickstarter where if you bought a certain pack, you could be one of the guy's boo thing. So I believe Carrie is it's Sam's. Um, I was so tempted to get Damien's, but <laughs> I don't have that cash money. <laughs> Sad. So, what's going on? Are you having premarital trouble? No, no, it's not about our marriage. Well... Carrie tilted her head at me, wondering what was the matter. I began to doubt myself. Should I tell her about the nightmare? Maybe it really was just a bad dream and I was overthinking it. I closed my eyes, thinking about what to say. Eventually, I finally spoke up. Uh-huh. A nightmare? Was it really bad? I nodded, remembering how horrified I was in the nightmare and visibly shivering at the memory. Carrie frowned and poured me a glass of pop. Maybe I should have brought alcohol. It's okay, girl. Well, maybe we got alcohol and poured that in the soda. I heard that thing is good. I wouldn't know. Not legal to drink yet. <laughs> oh, no, no, that wasn't... <laughs> it wasn't that terrible, I swear. I rubbed the back of my neck. I, mean, I had to relax. It was a nightmare. Nothing real. I should have been able to talk about it. I sighed and looked up at Carrie. It was about James. He... Uh, was holding me in a jail cell. <laughs> Carrie stared wide-eyed at me, unsure of what to say. I continued. He looked cold and evil. Diana was there, too. Diana? The succubus that tried to take the boys away? Yeah, her. <laughs> yeah, she was in the cell next to me, but for some reason, it seemed like she was trying to protect me. Protect you? How? My mind instantly replayed the nightmare, flashing to when Diana gripped James' shoulder and tried to pull him away from me. I couldn't help my body from wincing at the memory of her being shot by his gun. He came into my cell. He enthralled me and Diana shouted at him to leave me alone. Then he... Carrie reached over and placed her hand over on my shoulder, making me lower my head. It was strange to think about, Diana protecting me. Yet, I could feel the anger in her voice when James tried to approach me. She truly sounded like she had wanted to protect me. He shot her with his demon gun, and when she died, he came after me. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. It may not have been real, but my body can help but quake in fear when recalling the nightmare. I shook my head and looked at Carrie, needing to know what was going on. Do you think this is an omen? This nightmare can't just be a dream. Carrie ran her hands through her hair and stared at the blanket beneath us. She bit her lower lip as she contemplated, which made me worried. You said a jail cell? 
Yeah, it was in a stone dungeon. Like in a medieval castle? Yeah. <laughs> Carrie shook her head again and ran her, her ran her hands through her hair once more before looking up at me. I don't know if this is connected with that dream, but I've heard rumors about the Abyssal Plains being in utter chaos. And this is where we're gonna save. <sighs> this is all this crazy stuff. I, I do like how each uh, section, each character's storyline is different. That is surely unique. So each guy is like, we're there for a different reason, which is cool. <sighs> James is kind of scary though. We were in a jail cell. That ain't cool. <laughs> that is beyond uncool. But thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful and I will see you guys in the next one.